I've talked about data types that can be sent over Photon in the past. I said you can send most of your base types, so like byte, bool, short, integer, long, etc. All of these are accepted values. Photon has custom types for um, values that don't exist normally, like vector 2, 3, quaternions, and so on. Perhaps you have a class that has a series of uh, fields, like maybe it has a string, a couple integers, or whatever it may be, and you don't want to have to specify every um, every time you want to send that class. You don't necessarily want to send you know those integers and strings individually inside the RPC. It would make life easier for you if you could just pass in the instance of that class, and that's where custom types come in. There are two ways you can go about doing this. You can break down everything you want into a byte array and then pull the data out of that byte array upon receiving it. The other way is that you ultimately do the same thing, but you tell Photon how to um, go about breaking that down for you. In which case, Photon adds extra uh, conditions or extra items onto the byte array so that they can do that on their side. And this page indicates essentially the price you're going to pay by um, passing it in via instance rather than as a byte array. So whenever you get a chance, just take a look through this. Um, but to sum it up, pretty much if you're going to send a class that's only a few bytes, maybe maybe there's only like you know one or two integers you're going to send or, or or you know a byte or two, you're probably better off sending it as a byte array. That way you can just skip the overhead. Um, but if it's more complex and you want to pass in a lot of fields, then you're probably better off serializing it and letting Photon um, add on the extra bytes and indicators. So with all that said, let's take a look at how that's done. In my example, I'm using an RPC to send over the um, custom type. And I have a script called custom data type, which is going to be sending over that RPC. I also have another class called my custom serialization, which is the custom type I'll be serializing and sending over the network. In this script, I have two fields that I particularly want to serialize. I have the my number and the my string field. I'm going to first demonstrate how to just serialize these as a byte array. So I have a static method which returns a byte array and it's called serialize. And what you'd pass into it as the object is the instance of this class that you want to serialize. Under my serialize method, you can see that I am essentially converting the data into byte arrays and then I am joining the bytes at the end, or the byte arrays rather, and returning that value. I just googled join byte array and then I found this method online. So I think I actually got this from Stack Overflow. And if you need any information on how to convert certain values to bytes like strings, integers, floats, whatever it may be, um, best thing I can say is just Google it. Google, you know, convert C sharp, convert float to byte array and do some research. As I said, this is going to be um, different to each individual's use. So if you're not familiar with bit converter at the top of your head, you will be by the end of this or by the end of the time that you're done making your custom types. I don't want to get too hung up on the process of how to convert the data because like I said, that's a C-sharp thing. It's not really a photon thing. Uh, so first, I am making the number byte array and then I'm making the string byte array. And then on the serialize, which will take a byte array and convert it to an object, I know that an integer is four bytes. So I'm making a new byte array as four bytes and then I'm just copying the first four bytes and then converting it to an integer down here. And then I know the remainder of the byte array is going to be my string. So I'm going to take the remaining bytes from the fourth index and copy downwards towards the ends of it or the length, the remaining length of the byte array. As a friendly tip, if you are going to add types where the length may vary, such as a string, it's generally best to add a null terminator. So basically you would add a null char or you know char zero, which is a null char, to the end of your string, and you would search for that null char and then take your string up to that point and then skip past that null char. 
If you're unfamiliar with uh, networking or um, packets, this is commonly referred to as a packet parser or maybe a packet buffer. I would also recommend that if you do end up um, using this technique to make your own custom type, that you make one of those packet parsers for your use because you'll probably be using it fairly regularly. Okay, so now the part that's related to Photon. So I'm gonna go over to custom data type and I have a serialized field of the my custom serialization and in Unity all it is is just a class here where I can enter the values so I can see that they're changing over the network and ignore this line under start for now under update I'm just checking that if the my number field doesn't equal negative one then go ahead and send the instance of the class so you can see I'm passing in the class instance here and I have send is typed which will optionally send it as the class type versus the byte array and I'll demonstrate that um, down below as well and then I'm resetting my number just so it doesn't spam the network so let's go down to where I have send custom serialization so if I'm sending it as a byte array I have I'm calling RPC underscore receive my custom serialization I'm sending to everyone via the server so it's being passed through the server first that way I know it's actually working and then I'm passing in uh, my custom serialization dot serialize which if you recall returns a byte array and then as I said I'm passing in the instance of the class so up here under serialize is a static method and it expects an object and that's converted to the instance that you want to serialize so you can kind of see at this point that this was really easy to do. Um, I just called serialize and it made my instance into a byte array and it sent it over the network. So most of the work is going to be on making the byte array and pulling the data from the byte array. And now if I go down I just get the byte array and I'm calling the deserialize method which will return an object um, which automatically populates the values after converting them from the array and since it's an object I just have to cast to the type that I'm expecting now on the other option if I am sending it as a typed I'm just passing in the instance of the class directly and this is probably the uh, more favorable option and you can see that I am displaying the data right from the reference of the parameter I'm not casting the type I'm not calling the serialize it's still being done it's just photons doing it for me and that's where that um, little bit of extra bandwidth use comes in because it puts little indicators inside the the packet that lets it know how to do so but in order to pass in custom types that photon recognizes you have to register them with the server and you can call this photon peer dot register type at the start of your project you don't have to wait until you're connected to the server and you only have to call it once per launch so this is relatively easy to work with as well first you pass in the type of class that it's serializing so you have type of and then I have my custom serialization and then you have the code so there are um, up to 256 codes you can use so 0 to 256 for whatever reason Photon recommends using no higher than 255 it doesn't say why I'm a little curious about that um, but I guess don't use higher than 255 and the byte character for the letter M is between 0 and 255 so that's okay but you could just as easily pass in a number if you wanted just you they're using letter codes though because um, they're easier to recognize and probably remember also keep in mind there's a custom types class that is included with Photon and these are the values that are already being used so they're already using W, V, Q, and P so whatever you use one make sure you're not using it more than once because you're gonna run into issues um, and two make sure it's not in that custom types list lastly you need to specify which method is to be called to serialize the instance which is the static method we have uh, my custom serialization dot serialize and then which method is needed to deserialize it and um, which is of course the my custom serialization serialization 
dot deserialize. And uh, that's ultimately it. You can then go ahead and pass in data as a typed instance rather than a byte array. So let's go ahead and go over to Unity and see that in action. I can't test this out without being in a room first, so I'm going to course connect the photon and then make a room. And the class, if you remember, will send the data whenever the number changes. So I'm gonna leave the string empty for now just to show you that's working. I'm gonna hit five. And you can see receive type five comma and then empty because that's where the string was. So I'm gonna type in hello world. And I'm gonna go to my number and hit four. Receive type for hello world. And that's sending the instance because I have it marked as send as typed. So if I uncheck that, it will be sending a byte array. So I'm gonna go type in byte array as my string and I'm just gonna type in the number nine. And you can see it says receive byte array nine for the number and then byte array for the text. So that indicates that it's working. And as I said, it's being passed over the server. This is not local. So I know with certainty that it's behaving properly. As previously mentioned, I won't be covering how to convert to and from byte arrays. So please hold any questions you have on that subject.